So, hello, I am Sumed. Uh, I study at NIT Surat, National Institute of Technology Surat. And yeah, I am basically from Maharashtra state in India. Yeah. Okay, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, let's just get started. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Sumed. Uh, today, I will be talking about uh, how you can set up open event front end and open event server locally on your system. So, why I chose this topic was like uh, many of the new contributors when they come to open event project, they found it uh, really difficult to set up both of the domains locally. Uh, like uh, the current open event front end, if they set up only the front end, uh, the online hosted version of Heroku is used as the API. So I decided to uh, set up both of them and how you can hook them up. So uh, yes, a uh, little bit more about me. So I'm a third year computer in engineering undergrad at NIT Surat. Uh, I was a Google code in mentor uh, in 2017 with FOSS Asia on open event front end project. Uh, I was Google summer of code student with FOSS Asia. I mentored code hit students. Uh, I have worked with hacker rank in past and currently I'm working as a developer at Web Dev Labs in IT Surat. So yeah, uh, like everyone uh, else has told before, but I'll, I'll just repeat it, what is open event? So the open event project offers event managers a platform to organize uh, all kinds of events, including concert, conferences, summits, uh, regular meetups. Like consider you are an event organizer. For example, if you want to organize any event, any regular meetup, in your uh, community or college. So what you do is you, you have a lot of things to plan. Like you have to do the, uh, the whole event planning, what all are you gonna do in the event. You have to schedule everything. You have to uh, organize, like open up the call for speakers. You have to track the tickets, sales and orders, everything and stuff. And uh, yeah, so uh, we have, uh, so all of these things become a whole lot of mess when you uh, have to do this separately. So open event is a platform which helps you in uh, in just getting all of these things together at a one place and uh, you can just go ahead and give it a try and uh, like uh, uh, the components of like open event uh, uh, works in many components uh, which help you in event planning publicizing your event like it's it's one of the most important uh, thing that you have to publicize, you have to make it live on the web and you have to build your online presence. So open event helps you in uh, doing that with the help of its uh, Android app generator and web app generator and it also helps in uh, tracking sales orders and uh, stuff. So yeah, uh, so a little bit about the uh, architecture that we adapted in uh, from GSOC 2017. So initially uh, the current, uh, the current open event that is in production is event EA which uh, from which you have bought the tickets so uh, yeah it's uh, it's a tightly coupled app like uh, the front end and back end is tightly coupled so from uh, so it was hard to manage that code and and it was really difficult for new beginners uh, like to contribute to the project so we decided to shift toward the rest architecture decoupled architecture and we just separated out the front end and back end so uh, what this helps in is uh, you can scale your project you can manage the like it's easy to code uh, uh, you re you remove a lot of redundancy in your project uh, so yeah loosely coupled or the rest architecture that's are the same so uh, there are some certain ways where uh, which you can deploy the open event uh, like front end and uh, the back end uh, so uh, one way is to set up it locally other way is to like you can deploy it to heroku or Vagrant, Vagrant is like for if you just want to give it a try, you uh, you can just run the command Vagrant up and it just uh, sets up uh, if you want to give it a try. Uh, a Docker, uh, like containerization if you want to do, if you want to scale, uh, you can always do it with Docker. AWS, Google Compute Engine, uh, these like offer you the bare instances where you can set up your, uh, uh, the both the domains and Kubernetes. Uh, so uh, in this uh, talk, we'll be focusing more on how you can set up uh, it locally that will help you to begin the development flow and uh, make, uh, like help you to contribute to this project. So currently, the structure of open event uh, project is like we have, like we adopted this structure in GSOC 2017. We have a, a API server in the middle and which serves our uh, multiple services as you can see on the screen. Uh, we have Android App Generator, which generates the Android app for the attendees. We have Web App Generator 2, uh, which generates the website uh, from, uh, and 
we also have the event organizer app which helps the event organizers to keep a track of attendees and stuff so uh, there are uh, basically three steps involved in setting up the open event front end and server locally so what you need to do is first set up the server uh, secondly set up your front end and just uh, the third step is to make them work together right so we'll just go by the steps and uh, one by one and we'll just uh, go ahead and set it up so the very first thing we'll just go ahead and set up our server api server so uh, a little bit more about the server so our api server is built on uh, flask web micro framework and uh, currently we use celery and uh, redis for handling our and handling and scheduling our jobs uh, we use postgresql as a database and elastic search and kibana the basic setup is ready we'll just uh, 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 improve it more so yeah, the, there are several steps which I'll indicate, like I'll demonst demonstrate to you live uh, how you can uh, set up both of them. So first, let's get started with the open event uh, server. So there are some prerequisites that you need to uh, have. There are some prerequisites, uh, yeah, uh, that you need to have on your system which uh, aren't related to the project. So that's why uh, the that's your concern to to uh, uh, make them work properly. So these are uh, really basic, like you need to have Python 2 on your system, you need to have Postgres database, uh, and you need to have Node.js, right? So uh, all of the steps to install the uh, prerequisites are listed over here. You can just go ahead and check this out uh, in the open event server repository. So um, once you are done with uh, installing the prerequisites, we'll just I'll just show you how you can uh, uh, how how we can set up the open event server right so the steps uh, uh, as you can see the step number zero uh, yeah uh, is to clone the repository uh, so currently i have cloned the repository in uh, my local so uh, so that i won't waste any more time in cloning it so after cloning it uh, there is a step uh, you have to install the python dependencies right? Uh, this step is uh, basically common in every Python project. Like if you see any Flask or Django project or any Python uh, project, uh, you have to install the you have to install the its dependencies, and uh, we do it uh, with the help of pip. And there is a file called requirements.txt which lists all the dependencies uh, that have to be installed. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, install all our dependencies in our project so it's just go uh, as you can see on the screen i uh, just installed all the dependencies that are required the, by our project so if you face any 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 issues in installing this you will have to update your uh, version of pip and uh, other python or, or anything if, if the prerequisites are not working on your system then it will break so uh, right so the next step that we have here is uh, we need to have a database and uh, since we are using Postgres, you need to have Postgres installed on your system, right? So we'll, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll just create a user for our database and uh, we'll also create our database uh, by setting the user as the owner, right? So let's just go and launch the uh, Postgres SQL console and uh, we'll create a user for our database, right? So uh, as you can see, I have launched the uh, console and now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and create a user here with uh, just let's just say name and breathe and let's just keep it simple by uh, so as you can see it has created a role and uh, now that uh, user is created we are just going ahead and creating a database so that uh, so that we can set the created user as the owner of the database right so so as you can see you have we have created our database and if uh, i am going ahead and listing all the database you can see over here that a user the owner with the open event database is created over here so uh, now that this step is done right we have to make our server use our database right so we'll just exit our psql console and 
we will go ahead and we have a sample environment file that we need to ma modify. So, this file contains uh, the database user and the password. So, this helps us in like uh, having multiple databases for development and production. So, that is a pretty efficient way to develop ok. So, as you can see I have changed the URL of the, the, the of the database that we currently created. So, let us just go ahead and save it and we will uh, restart our PostgreSQL service so that it will be loaded with the new configurations right. So, as you can see it is stopping and it will uh, start again. Uh, so, we will have our process restarted. Yeah. So, uh, now that you can see it has successfully restarted our PostgreSQL we will just go ahead and create our db by uh, like you can see the step number 5 it uh, says python create db.py. So, what it does is it uh, uh, creates the empty tables in our database. So, uh, when I will just as you can see it will ask me for a uh, email or for the super admin a super admin is like you can uh, keep a track of everything everything like your users what, what and what or not I, I mean the events everything everything. So, I will just go ahead and uh, enter uh, email and password and, and you can see it is listed that it is creating roles services permissions and everything and it uh, it has successfully created. Now, that our database is ready. Uh, we will just go ahead and check for migration. So, uh, since we are setting it for the first time uh, there is no need to set up migration. Migration are only like uh, uh, a, a git for the database right. Uh, so, still if you want to run it uh, like we can just go ahead and run it right. Uh, so, now uh, basically we are ready to launch our API server. Uh, uh, we are and we can just go ahead and execute our command that is listed over here in the step number 6 which says python manage dot py run server and as you can see it is the server is running on localhost 5000 uh, on 5000 port and we will just go ahead and see. Uh, if it yeah so as you can see we are having our uh, api server ready over here it's running it's successfully running so uh, we have done uh, until this part then the next uh, part would be to set up our open event front end right we have uh, our the three parts were setting up our open event server open event front end and open event and uh, just linking them together to make use of uh, them right uh, so yeah, let us just go ahead uh, with open event front end. So, this year uh, since we adapted the rest architecture for open event we decided to go with ember js uh, because of uh, because of its uh, some of its advantages like uh, it, it has two way data binding it has convention it follows convention or configuration policy plus uh, yeah uh, since like it be uh, with the help of ember data you can just go ahead and fetch everything and store it in your browser. So, it is easy for the users to access uh, everything rather than like uh, uh, the, the when when it's it's helpful in scalability, yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, we'll just go ahead and set up open event front end locally, right? So I have cloned the repository to save time here. So what you'll uh, what are the prerequisites that you need? Th these are also the basic one. You'll need a git on your system. You'll need Node.js, right? Uh, to install our npm packages. You'll need Bower to install your front end dependencies. Uh, plus there is one more tool called ember cli. So, ember cli is a very robust tool to to which provides you uh, which uh, which gives you like a uh, facility to create the routes components test controllers in ember js easily. With the help of ember cli you can uh, generate the like you have to it, it enables you to focus more on your code logic rather than the structure of your project right. So, yeah, Ember CLI you can install it from its official site. It's just uh, npm package, so you don't need to worry much. And uh, Phantom JS, yeah, we are using Phantom JS for our um, uh, testing purposes. Uh, it's a headless website testing tool, so we are using Phantom JS, and um, it's a basic uh, npm package with a check node version. So open event front end, like 
uh, we we don't want our front end to break on any at any instance so we check uh, when we install the npm packages we first check with the help of check node version whether our uh, front end project is compatible with the node version of the uh, user or not so let's it's it's pretty easy to set up front end locally uh, it's just you need to install your npm packages and bower packages bower dependencies and you need to start the server so let's just go ahead as you can see i have this files i have package.json file here i'll just go ahead and do a npm install which will install all the dependencies uh, here in the uh, so as you can see it's it's checking for the uh, it's checking the check node version and uh, when it is fine it will run all the commands and install all your dependencies the next step is to do a bower install which will install our uh, uh, oh so bower dependencies are already installed so it didn't show up anything so bower install will install your uh, front end dependencies the uh, whatever you are using the uh, css or js uh, packages on the front end side right so uh, now that we have installed all the dependencies we'll just spin up our server so with the in ember you can just do it with the help of ember serve and it will just start your server uh, we, just, we, are, we are just waiting to start our server right so um, once our server is started we'll just go ahead and visit it at localhost 4200 it's still starting so the current uh, front end that you will see in a moment will be using the uh, api that is hosted on the heroku uh, which is and uh, that 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 isn't the one that uh, we have set up in that terminal that you can see in that terminal right so the we what our aim is to link them together like this front end server like should uh, make request to this back end that we have uh, running here on the 5000 port right so this front end so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and just a second i'm stopping the server and we need to so uh, for this purpose what have we done in the project is we have a file called environment.js where you have a api host setup you are where we are accepting our api host as an environment variable and if it is not there we are just going ahead and using uh, open event api.herocap.com so let's just uh, go ahead and set up our open and export an environment variable called api host uh, uh, which will re uh, which will just point towards our uh, local running server right so yeah okay so i'll just go ahead and restart our server so that uh, the front end our front end will use our local server rather than using the online hosted version of heroku right um, we'll just wait till it starts so how how this can be helpful like uh, consider you are uh, you are uh, like you are you have your own organization and you, if you want to uh, if you want to deploy your own event management system for your organization uh, to a bare instance bare ubuntu instance or any any any, any of them like so you can just go ahead and clone these repositories and follow these steps to just and then you have you just have to do a dns setup right uh, and you have a whole uh, whole event management system of your organization ready a separate one like eventj.com still exists but if you run an organization it's it's uh, more of like helpful to have a separate event management system right so as you can see i'll just reload the page and it will just a second ha huh, yeah so as you can see we, uh, there it, this shows no up upcoming events found since we haven't uh, we have our database empty so we'll just i'll just show you how we can create events for example uh, the super admin email that I created at the time of creating the database was hello it uh, I'm logging with the, those credentials and as you can see you can just go ahead and create the event here uh, you can just uh, go ahead and have the location and just I'm just uh, publishing this one I'll show the whole product later so as you can see that we have uh, use uh, the both uh, front end and our back end and we have hosted it uh, uh, like 
uh, we we can we are able to set up the whole event management system separate for uh, any any org or anything right so yeah um, uh, now the next part i will like uh, so the gsoc work product so this project was at a uh, front end project was adopted in uh, gsoc 2017 what we built i am going to show you the whole uh, uh, screencast of the front end that we created using ember.js and semantic ui so as Abhinav said that uh, Semantic UI is a very robust framework, it has a lot more components that Twitter bootstrap, it has a great community to help out and you need to write a very less CSS, I mean negligible CSS to have a very beautiful front end like this, right. So yeah, uh, Semantic UI is a great framework and you, as you can see this, this is the new uh, product that we built in uh, uh, Google Summer of Code 2017. So the current one that is in production is eventy.com from which you purchase the tickets. But uh, uh, now that uh, this is in development, we'll still uh, we'll just release it this year at the end of the GSOC this year. So you will see this uh, in production, and yeah, we'll be shifting to this uh, UI. So yeah, as you can see, you can just go ahead and edit your events, and you can add tickets, you can add sponsors for your tickets, you can just go ahead and have session micro locations, right? As you can see, and. Uh, you can also manage the event from this dashboard. You can add rules you, as an attendee or as an organizer, co-organizer, track organizer. You you are able to invite people for different roles. You are also able to delete the roles. You are able to uh, track, uh, like group the tickets by attend attendees or orders or uh, and, and we have a scheduler too, right? So uh, there are many more sections like event export. Uh, so yeah as you can see there is a profile section of the user and admin section 2 where we where the admin can manage everything related to the project that he has created uh, related to the event that he has created as you can see you uh, here we are having uh, here the admin can manage the sessions events users how many super admins that you have how many number of sessions that uh, like are accepted that are in draft or rejected so this whole UI that uh, we built and yeah you can just go ahead and check the sales uh, which are grouped by events organizers location marketer discounted events fees and invoices uh, and a lot more um, and the admin can also see the activity who has logged in or uh, uh, into uh, the open event and yeah the notifications report settings and uh, other modules right so this was the uh, front end that we created during uh, Google Summer of Code 2017 and uh, we'll be making it live uh, as soon as possible. Uh, there are notifications too, like, uh, so yeah. So uh, as you can see, I have told, uh, I have um, distributed this talk in three parts. First one was setting up your front end, setting up your back end and just uh, uh, hooking them up so that you can have your own event management system uh, either on locally on your system or you can host it somewhere to for your university or uh, or the organization right so this is the project link and document uh, and communication part so uh, uh, if you want to note this one uh, you can just go ahead and uh, have a look at the project also if you found a bug uh, just go ahead and report it there I'll share the link to the slides too uh, yeah so uh, that's it from my side if you have any questions so please do let me know and here are some links that you may want to note down okay uh, if you have any questions please please do let me know here yeah. could you actually back it up to the link slide this one yeah yeah sure thank you yeah okay uh, okay that's it from my side thank you guys